Hey everybody and welcome back to another Goram Guide to Glue. I am your favorite Dungeon Master DM Andy and today I'm going to build bases. So if you've been following along, you know previously I took a bunch of World of Warhammer, Mage Knight, and Hero Clicks and I cut them off their bases and I repurposed those miniatures for my tabletop games. So today, I'm going to make bases for some of those miniatures so that they fit the scene and they're nice and decorative so they look cool while you're playing games. I'm going to start with four 32 millimeter bases and show you four different ways I like to go about decorating my bases for my miniatures. So with this first base, I'm just going to coat the top of it entirely in glue. Then with this second one, I'm only going to coat half of it. Then I'm going to take both of these bases and just dip them in a bag of sand. Clean up the edge and then set them aside to dry. Decorative bases can be a little tedious because there's several steps of glue dry, paint dry, glue dry. So just be really patient with this process. It may take a few hours, if not a couple of days, to get these done. For this third base, I got a little XPS foam out, and I cut down small slivers of this piece I had, and I'm going to chop them up into small bricks and lay out a brick pattern on this third one. If you're not sure what size bricks to make, make a few different ones and see which ones you like best by dry fitting them on your base. You can also make these bricks out of food cardstock or bread ties. I'm just going to smear on a little bit of PVA glue and then I'm going to cut these long bricks in half and start stacking them on in a brick wall pattern. If you don't have an X-Acto knife, you can do the exact same thing with toothpicks. You can do these brick formations in all kinds of patterns. Uh, if you cut them a little rounder, you can even make them look like cobblestone. Now that's a good looking base right there. So from here, I'm going to let those dry, but I need flocking, and I don't feel like going to the store to get flocking. So I took out this little piece of twine and used scissors and cut it down. Then I just smeared PBA glue all over a base and dipped it in that twine. There you go. Dead grass. If you mix this with a little green paint, you can also make it look like real grass. Healthy grass, real grass. It'll look like green grass. Now I want a couple of rocks, and I'm really too lazy to even get up and go right outside to where there's rocks laying in my front yard up by my porch. So I'm just going to chop up some more of this XPS foam and crush it with an aluminum foil ball and glue it on. For those who don't know, which everyone does, an aluminum foil ball gives XPS foam and other styrofoams texture more like rock or concrete. And now it's on to creating some rigidity in my model bases. I'm going to take some black paint and Mod Podge and I'm going to go over all the sand and all the XPS foam rocks. Uh, this is going to help secure the sand to the base as well as protect the foam from getting damaged by anything. Now, depending on how you like to do these things, you could have done this step before adding any of the flocking so you won't get any of that paint on your grass. But I was in a hurry for the video and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And when you're doing these paint, dry, paint, glue, dry, paint, dry, glue, dry steps, it becomes monotonous and you forget the best way for the best end results. So this is one of those don't do it the way I did it. Um, finish most of your gluing and some of your painting before you ever do your flocking. It'll have a better end result. And after that PSA to keep the hobby wolves at bay, I'm going to move on to a little bit of dry brushing, maybe more of a thick dry brush. Uh, I'm not wiping the brush off onto a paper towel. I'm just wiping it off next to the puddle of paint I made. And I'm going to do this for all the bases that have any rock or stone. Now I'm going to get out a light brown and I'm just going to dot a few of the rocks and some of the stones on each of these bases just to make them pop a little more. They'll look fine after we wash everything and it'll bring all those colors back down to a more neutral place. I just stuck with that same color I was using on the other bases and I colored in the sand on this brick base to make it look more like a desert. 
Now, if you notice when I'm doing this, I try to wipe away the excess paint that gets on the lip of the base. I think they look cooler if that base is clean. And this is an ancient gamer secret. Paint brushes work great as dead plants on your tabletop terrain, on your scatter terrain, on your miniature bases, on your game mats. You could put this stuff on everything. I just use a little hot glue, adhere it to the piece, and then wait for that glue to dry. Uh, trim it down with a pair of scissors. You know, plants aren't perfect. Organic material grows in random shapes and designs so uh and i also take a lighter to them if you hit it with the lighter just right it'll kind of make a bulbousy top where the paintbrush melts just a little uh, but be careful you don't want to set your base and your flock on fire once you have these steps complete set these aside and let them dry all the way before we start dry brushing with white paint um this is going to bring all the rock and all the stones and all the material like the skulls it's going to bring that paint level up a little bit and it's going to look saturated with color just a little bit on you, but we're going to go back over it with a dark wash and bring that tone right back down. So don't worry about it if at first it looks a little sketchy. And I have a confession here. I don't use regular store-bought washes. Uh, I don't go through the trouble of making washes. I have a mason jar that I rinse out my brush from when we're doing Mod Podge projects, and I save that. It's just black paint, Mod Podge, and a ton of water from where I'm rinsing out my brushes. And it is perfect for scatter terrain, miniature bases. It works really, really well on anything that you're not trying to have super professional painter details. And it's cheaper than any other stuff you see out there. Now I'm just adding a few final touches. I got out some antique white because there's a skull on one of these bases and I'm gonna use it to edge highlight the, the larger stones. Um, you can do these in any colors you want. You can try and experiment with lots of different things. I just go with these earth tone colors because I like them that way. And now on to my favorite part. Um, I'm going to glue on the miniatures. This is a Mage Knight Dwarf, and I'm just going to attach him to this gravel base. I just use a little super glue, holding there for a second, and he sets up. Then I'm going to move on to this Hero Click. It's a Poison Ivy Hero Click. And I'm going to glue it onto the grass and gravel base and use that as a druid for my games. So, you know, I didn't do much touch up to these miniatures. I cut almost all of them straight off their base and glued them onto my new base. And they work perfect like that when you want to play and you're not very good at painting. This one is a blood elf from World of Warcraft. And I'm going to glue her onto the dead grass with the rocks and the skull. And I'm going to hold her there for a second. This one was a little bit cantankerous because of her pose. She was standing on that rock with her back foot in the grass. And the grass just didn't want to connect the way I wanted it to. But eventually that glue set up and it made, made perfect miniature. And this last one is from a Magic the Gathering board game. He's one of the planeswalkers and I painted his hair yellow since he looks like an elf. And now it's on to the turntable, the glamour shots, and me begging for more subscriptions. Guys, if you like what I'm doing here, please like and subscribe. I think there's a bell notification or something. I don't actually pay much attention to that. Um, I don't understand Google Analytics or the algorithm. I just like making miniatures. So if you like me making miniatures, go ahead and like and subscribe and join the team. And as always, I am your favorite Dungeon Master, DM Andy, and I'm saying use Mod Podge black paint and water and quit buying washes. Hey, stick around and watch me finish up the Spider Queen, which I live streamed a couple of days ago. Thank you, everybody.